This isn't going to be a long tutorial, I really just want to get the basics out of the way because I do see some people asking how do I make my mashups in FL Studio. Right now I'm actually using FL Studio 20 which is the most recent version but it's also the demo version. So you guys don't have to pay any money for the full program if you guys cannot afford it and seriously if all you're going to be doing is mashups you probably shouldn't buy FL Studio anyways. So the first thing I'm going to quickly show is that you're going to want to go to file and what you're going to want to do is you want to start from a new template and you want to just be completely empty. That way you have a completely brand new thing or whatever that's not going to be cluttered up with anything. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag in the two songs that we're going to be using for today. For this mashup I'm going to be using Snowblind by AU5 and Skybreaker by Razahel. These two songs were very selectly chosen as AU5 Snowblind is F sharp minor and 138 BPM and Skybreaker by Razahel is F minor 140 BPM. So I'll be showing you guys how to change the pitch, how to change the BPM and stuff like that. This is obviously going to be one of the better case scenarios where the BPMs on the pitch isn't going to be that far apart but obviously you guys can do it farther and farther and farther apart if needed. But before we even do anything, one of the first things, and I think it's really good etiquette, I suppose is the right word when doing stuff like this, is what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that each song is going to be going to their own volume track. The great reason for that is because then you can apply effects and you can do individual voluming for e every single song that you have. Isn't that just... Just a wonderful noise. So the next thing I'm probably going to do is I want to show you guys how to do it uh, aligned to BPM. So as you can see over here, you can change the BPM of the project. Obviously, I'm going to be doing it to 140. Or if I wanted to do it to Snowblind, I could bring it down to 138, whatever works for you. So at this point, what you're going to want to do is, as you can see, because it's 140, that means we can just easily align Skybreaker right up to the beat. And if I was to single this out, you'll see that every single beat will align So what you're going to want to do is with Snowblind, you're going to double click and you're going to come to time. You're going to right click on it and you're going to go to auto detect. Now, contrary to popular belief, auto detect absolutely sucks. So you're going to want to type in the BPM yourself and easily just put 138. Now you'll see that the BPM has quite easily been synced up. So one of the things you're going to quickly notice is that by changing the BPM, it actually changes the pitch of the song as well. And what you're going to want to do is if you want to maintain the pitch, you're going to want to set it to stretch so that they will stay as the same pitch as it originally was. But you can change the speed of the song however you want. Running away. Of course, it's just a 2 BPM difference, so you don't really notice it. But obviously, it does stand out when you're playing it with another song. At this point, now I'm going to show you guys how to change the pitch. With the stretch enabled, you're going to be able to change the pitch very easily. If you have it set to anything else like resample or e-generic or auto or whatever, it's going to take a little bit of time to change the pitch as it has to like render out the entire song. But with stretch, it does it basically instantaneously. So seeing as Snowblind is F sharp and we're going to want to change it to F minor to sync it up with Skybreaker, we are going to bring it down 100 cents. This is basically just simple music theory and I'll put a screenshot on the screen of basically every single key and whether you'd have to go up or down. The chart I use is a bit wacky but once you understand the fundamentals of the keys and whatnot, it is pretty easy to go around. So let's hear it now. <laughs> So one of the things that I think is going to happen when this uh, recording comes up is that you're going to notice that there's probably a lot of distortion going on. I can't hear it right now because in the DAW it doesn't seem to allow you to have or hear any distortion. But once you export it, there's going to be hella distortion. So one of the things I like to do is because we have each song individually into each track, I like to bring it down 10% so that both of the vault channels are at 70%. So now you can see it's not really peaking as much. What's going to happen is it's probably going to be peaking in the master. But what I've come to realize is as you can see the different numbers, as long as it doesn't pass positive 3 decibels, there's not going to be any very obvious distortion. Sometimes it's okay to go past 0. But as long as you can stay either just above or slightly below 0, your song's not going to have any distortion in it, which is going to be pretty dank. A lot of people, what they'll do when they're starting off is they'll put a fruity limiter, which basically will eliminate a lot of the 
distortion it will sometimes make your matches sound a little compressed but at the end of the day i would say it's a lot better than having distortion what i'd usually do with my free limiters is i just take away all the attack the release and the sustain and i just kind of leave it flat sometimes i'll increase the ceiling just a little bit doesn't really change much but that's it So as you can see, it's not really going too far up, not not going distorting or anything like that. What'll tend to happen though is if you have a limiter and the volumes are way too loud, it'll distort anyways. That tend to that, that tends to happen with limiters. I keep on stuttering today, heck. So what I've come to learn is I'll put the limiters on the individual tracks instead of the master because usually you don't want to put anything on the master, or if you're putting something on the master, it's when you're doing a final master on it. <laughs> Funny joke. But yeah, at this point, really all it comes down to is learning how to use the cutting tool and moving the stuff around so that the drops sync. So I'm going to quickly just sit, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to simply solo one of the tracks and find the drop. Found the drop here. And where's the uh, Skybreaker? So right here. So I guess with the structure of the song, as you can see, it does come two beats later rather than four which is normally what happens there's probably some sort of other stuff at this point it really just comes down to uh, syncing it up yourself and trying to make the mashup as seamless as possible so we're just gonna simply pretend as if the two come together without any issues pretty simple i mean there isn't really much to this obviously when it comes to the songs with a lot more songs like 10 20 50 songs the 200 song mashup for example it does get a lot more complicated but when it really comes down to it it all just kind of comes down to practice and learning how to organize learning the different effects one of the effects that i would very strongly recommend you learn is basically the eqing it's obviously the bass booster's best friend but it does help out when it comes to say say soloing out vocals you'll want to remove some bass if you want to enunciate the vocals you maybe want to increase a little bit the higher ends say learning how to use a little bit of reverb it does come down to just practicing no amount of tutorials will really ever get you as much experience as actually doing the plugins yourself now this video will be called a beginner's guide to mashups but if i'm going to be completely honest because of the nature of mashups there really is a ceiling as to the skill that it takes to make a mashup it'll be very condescending i or it'll be very egotistical of me to say that it's not hard to make the 200 song mashup and what i mean by that is it's not hard but it does take a lot of time while it's not hard to make a big mashup it does take a lot of time to really refine it and make it sound good i know somebody's probably going to call me out in the comment section for that but i struggle a lot well really I've been doing this mashups for one, two years, and I've kind of been doing this on a daily basis, or if not daily, almost daily basis. So obviously, I'm going to have a lot easier time. I'm going to have a lot of shortcuts to what I do. I'm going to know what to look out for. So obviously, if you have only been doing this for a month or so, it's going to be a lot different to say now. I think also one of the other things that I find to be kind of interesting is that it took me about a half a year to actually get good at mashups. Well, nowadays, there's so many resources on the internet for help. There are communities dedicated to mashups. I've noticed some people start to make mash mega mashups within two weeks of starting making mashups. So it's really not that hard to really get started as long as you're open to criticism and at seeking help. But hopefully, I guess if you wanted to start maining in FL Studio, this tutorial will somewhat help. If there's any questions in the comment section down below, I'll try to help out. But yeah, at the end of the day, no amount of tutorials are ever going to help you as much as actually making mashups yourself. And even if they suck, eventually, once you start to know what to look out for, you're going to be doing pretty alright. I was thinking of making an intermediate tutorial for how to make mashups, but I don't really think making an intermediate tutorial will really help out as much. So I guess at this point, all I'm really going to say is how to export. Go to File, Export. I usually export to WAVE because that'll obviously give the best quality, but as well, it's also going to give you the biggest file size. So if, say, you only want to send it over to a friend to quickly listen to, MP3 would be pretty alright. When exporting MP3, I would strongly suggest make a name and make sure that you want to have the bitrate to max. I like to have the bitrate to max. Usually, if you can have it a bit lower, 
quality is going to be lost and there isn't going to be that much file size reduction so just put it to the max anyways that's all i've got for you guys today i think one of the last things i'll show you guys before ending off this tutorial is volume not just volume but one of the cool things that you can do is automations in fl studio and the reason you're going to want to know that is because if you want to automate stuff say make stuff go down make stuff go up automations are going to be your best friend whether you like it or not and sometimes they can really be annoying and a little bit buggy at times but basically all you're going to want to do is for the most part with any knob except you know some knobs like for example time you can't do this but you're going to want to right click it create automation clip and a small shortcut to any of you beginners select the area you want to make the automation for before making the automation because then when you create it it'll put it to this very small area rather than to the entire project size and when you start making mixes like hour-long mixes if you don't make that small area it's gonna make an hour-long automation and that's that's not fun anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this obviously I'm gonna say again searching for help through YouTube there's obviously gonna be a lot of tutorials out there but if you guys are only looking to, you know, just make your own mashups for whatever reason, there it is. Anyways, that's all for me. I'm the Old Pixel 19. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Any questions in the comments section down below, you can leave them or DM me or whatever. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.